Well, hello again, friends. Grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you. Welcome to day seven, or session seven, of our 25 Days of Christmas Hymns devotional. Glad to have you guys along with the journey. If you've missed any of our first six sessions, they're always saved right here on the Facebook page, also saved over on my YouTube channel. So if you ever have any issues, any concerns, any problems finding anything, then let me know. I'll be more than happy to try to point you in the right direction. Uh, today we have a hymn that may be a little bit unfamiliar to most of you. I know it was unfamiliar to me, to be quite honest, as I began uh, doing some research on this particular session. It's called Once in Royal David's City. Once in Royal David's City. We'll talk about it here in just a little bit. You'll get to hear it, and uh, if you're not quite familiar with it, and, but then once you start to uh, understand the tune, if you want to sing it, certainly sing it as loud and as proud as, as, as you can. But before we get there, I want to read a, a little bit of scripture to you. Uh, this comes from the Gospel of John, and it is the very first chapter, verses 1 through 16. Again, this is the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 16. And St. John writes these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness... We have all received grace upon grace. My friends, this is the word of God for you and I, the children of God. Thanks be to God. All right, my friends, so without further ado, I want to present to you this arrangement of the hymn, Once in Royal David's City. We'll listen to it, sing it if you want to sing it, then we'll come back and talk about it. But here again, Once in Royal David's City. sadness 
Friends, I hope you enjoyed that arrangement. I want to give you a little bit of the background, the history of what you just listened to. This is a carol that may be unfamiliar to many of us in America, but is rich with tradition in Great Britain. Originally written as a poem in 1848 by Cecil Francis Alexander, this carol was published in her Hymns for the Little Children hymn book. The intent of the poem and subsequent hymn is to musically teach part of the catechism in a memorable way. Songs and hymns like this were designed to teach the truths of Scripture to children in a way that they could commit to memory. The hymn would later be set to music, and 60 years after it was written, it would make the world's stage to launch the Christmas Eve festival of nine lessons and carols each and every year. I don't know how many of you have ever participate in a, a lesson of nine or a festival of nine lessons and carols, but this is the hymn that always leads that off. Every Christmas Eve since 1919, the festival of nine lessons and carols has began with this hymn. It happens every Christmas Eve in England. It is an incredible honor to be selected as the soloist for the first stanza to quite literally sing before the world. Since that very first festival, these words have taught the childhood of Jesus to countless millions and helped to serve as a reminder of Christ's humble beginnings. The theology is light in much of this carol and in some places a little loose. Some stanzas have been met with criticism over the years and though the words to those stanzas make sense in the context of the carol, they still make plenty of assumptions about the childhood of Christ. Even still, it serves as a great way to begin teaching children about Jesus in a way that connects well with them. So that's the history behind this maybe lesser known hymn or carol. Here's our devotion for this session. The Bible describes Jesus' birth as Christ having emptied himself to be born in the likeness of men. Jesus became as we are, humble and subject to the law. The difference? Jesus was thoroughly untainted by sin, being God in the flesh. So why would the light of the world take the bold step into darkness? The answer is simple, sweet, and life-giving. It's because he loves us. When Jesus stepped into this world to fulfill the law, it was an unprecedented act of love at odds with logic. Logically, God should have no desire to pour out such a sacrificial love into his rebellious and irreverent people. Love is the only explanation. A deep and meaningful love. A perfect love. In Galatians chapter 4, verses, verses 4 through 5, Paul reminds us, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. So with that devotion in mind, here now is our application for this session. So what do we do with this knowledge? How do we respond to this boundless love our Savior has poured out on us by stepping into this world in every kind of humility? Philippians 2 gives us a little insight. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus wants us to know him and trust him enough to call him Lord. With such a sacrificial act of love, the trust should come easily. When we trust him, he transforms us. When we call him Lord, he leads us and guides us. Here is the amazing truth. You have been redeemed. Your debt has been purchased by blood. The story of your redemption began with the humble Jesus child and carries on every single day until his return. All right, friends, here are three reflection questions that I want you to, to think about, to ponder until we meet again next session. The first is this. What does it mean that Jesus humbled himself? What does it mean that Jesus humbled himself? Number two, why is it sometimes hard to trust him even in the light of such sacrificial love? Why do we have a hard time sometimes trusting God or trusting Jesus, even knowing how deep his love is for us? And then three, what does Jesus' act of sacrificial love say about you? What does Jesus' act of sacrificial love say about you? All right, friends, ponder those three things, if you would, until we meet for session number eight, which we will take a look at the hymn, Lo, How a Rose, Air Blooming. Lo, How a Rose, Air Blooming. All right, as we bring this session to a close, my friends, I want to offer up to you this word of prayer, if you would join me in prayer. Lord, we give thanks to you for your love, for the way that you humbled yourself to take the form of a human, sacrificing so much for each and every one of us. We ask, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and fill our minds and help us to have the courage to trust you. And as we trust you, we ask that you transform us and when we call you Lord, we ask that you lead us and guide us. Lord, we do trust you, and we do love you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, until next time, God bless and take care.